Welcome everybody to Moore County Schools very first family learning series webinar. We are so excited to join you all tonight to share with you some different items about the Chromebook in hopes that this can help you facilitate learning at home um, during the 2020-2021 school year. Today I'm joined by a fantastic group of teachers and district leaders that I will um, talk to you guys to you about in a few minutes, but first I just want to go through a couple um, of housekeeping items before we begin. Um, the first of which is we hope that you communicate to us during this webinar through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, you'll notice the Q&A tab. Please go ahead and write any questions that you have regarding the things we're talking about or if we miss an item that you really wanna learn more about, please write that in that Q&A um, spot and we'll be monitoring those questions. And at the end of the presentation, we'll be able to go through those for you. The second thing, this is being recorded and we will have the link available um, through Moore County Schools website as well as principals will be sharing this out on their school platforms. So if you would like to review anything, there will be a recording or to share out with anyone that you think might benefit from this. Um, but again, we are so excited to have you here. We are going to take a little bit of time and really dive in to the Chromebook this new learning tool that has been thrown out there to help facilitate learning to your kids and hope that this benefits you as you help them navigate it at home. So let me talk to you a little bit about our fantastic panels of teachers joining us tonight. We have Miss Kayla Carter and she is coming to us from Cameron Elementary School. She teaches second grade at Cameron. Her favorite thing about teaching is developing relationships with her students and being able to offer them guidance and support um, wherever they need it in the academic setting. She is most passionate about teaching reading and she loves to be able to teach students how to connect their individual lives to their learning. When students become curious in her class, she sees that they become more interested and she loves sharing her passion for learning with her students. We're so excited to have Kayla with us. Our second teacher expert uh, panelist is Mrs. Courtney Glendenning. She comes to us from West End Elementary where she teaches third grade. Her favorite thing about teaching is developing relationships within her classroom and also across her school community. Her favorite part about teaching and leading is helping younger teachers and beginning teachers navigate their way through the classroom. So thank you, Ms. Clendenning, for joining us. Our last teacher expert is Mrs. Rachel Lambert. Ms. Lambert teaches third grade virtually at McDeeds Creek Elementary School. Her favorite thing about teaching is watching children learn to effectively collaborate, show grit when things are tough, and become critical thinkers and problem solvers. She's passionate about both supporting teachers and students across her school. And she's actually, believe it or not, in all of her spare time working on her EDD, that's a doctorate program in curriculum and instruction. So these are truly a fantastic group of teachers who are gonna lead you through learning all about your Chromebook tool they have day-to-day -day experience and expertise, and they're gonna do a fantastic job leading you through this. From the district level, we have Ms. Donna Gebhardt, and she is our Director of Curriculum and Instruction. We have Ms. Heather Stewart. She is the Assistant Director of Curriculum Instruction. We have Mr. Steve Johnson, our Assistant Director of Technology. And then we have myself, I'm Mariah Morris, and I am our Innovation and Special Projects Coordinator. We are so beyond happy to be with you tonight, and we hope that this is a meaningful experience in helping your students. So to kick us off, um, we're gonna go ahead and turn this over to our fantastic panel, um, who are gonna talk to us about an overview of your new learning tool. All right, thank you, Mariah. Uh, my name is Steve Johnson. I'm really glad to be here um, with these teacher leaders. I'm actually um, also a former teacher, so I'm a 
kindergarten and second grade teacher is where I taught in the classroom. And now I really enjoy working with teachers and helping families to use their tools here in Moore County Schools. So um, I'm just going to kick it off and just show you a little bit about your tool and, and what you'll be getting. Um, uh, some of you that are Connect students will already have these, and some of you that are Plan B will be receiving them in the future. Um, this is a Google Chromebook, and so if you've never been um, if you've never been in touch with a Google Chromebook before, you're not sure what it is. Essentially, this is a laptop, just like a regular laptop that runs Google uh, platforms, and so. Um, it's a it's a it's a slimmed down laptop. I've actually got my daughters. Um, I've got three daughters in the system, and so it looks just like this. That's about the size of it when you have it. Uh, what you're going to receive and what's checked out to your student is the Chromebook and a charger, and so that's what you'll receive. And they'll be taking them home. The Plan B students will be taking them home and sleeve back and forth between school. Um, and so the, the, the Chromebook. Uh, one thing you want to make sure, of course, is to make sure you keep it charged. Um, it has headset ports. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you all the different ports, but I will describe that it does have USB ports. So just like a regular laptop, um, you can plug a mouse into it. That works really well for some students that would like to use a mouse instead of using the trackpad. You can also plug a larger keyboard into it if you have a USB keyboard for some students that like larger keyboards. And you've also got a HDMI, which is a, a port that you can use to plug in monitors or TVs if you want a bigger view. Um, and then on the other side is basically just your power supply. So that is a Chromebook. And like I say, it is a Google tool. Um, and you log into it with your Google account and it accesses the things that some of the teachers are going to go through a, a little bit later on. This is just a couple tips on things you want to make sure of whenever you've got the Chromebook in your house. Um, some things that we try to teach our students in school uh, that we want to keep consistent at home. Um, so basically, uh, when you are using the Chromebook or when you're seeing your uh, child use a Chromebook, try to keep it on a very level, flat surface. Um, these are pretty durable devices, we found, but they don't do great if they uh, fall off of tables or fall off of beds. And so you just want to make sure that you keep it on a nice, flat surface that's a good surface for them to work on. Uh, the, the Chromebook screen itself, this is a really important piece of information. If you are using, if you are opening the Chromebook up back and forth and you're seeing your students, you want to have them open it by the edges and not grab onto the screen. Um, the reason we don't ask kids, we ask kids not to do that is because it can leave a mark and it can leave damage to the screen just by grabbing it and pulling it open and shut. And so that's really one of the only points that gets damaged is on that screen. Of course, don't put food or drink near a Chromebook. That's always a good rule. Um, always be careful with the cords coming in and out and making sure that those um, pieces stay, stay stable. Uh, this is a, a big one is uh, a lot of kids like to, um, their own personal things, they like to put stickers and like to put drawing and they like to put labels on them. But we ask for the school equipment not to put any of that on um, because these are uh, tools that we use back and forth from school and it can damage the device and we don't want to charge anyone for something as silly as a label or a sticker that won't come off. Uh, never place heavy objects on top of Chromebooks. I'll also say, in, in addition to that, if, if it's in the sleeve, don't put anything else in the sleeve with the Chromebook. Um, another thing that's not on here is sometimes students will put pens or pencils in their Chromebook, and it will come between the screen and the keyboard. That's another way to get it damaged quickly, so make sure that there's nothing in between when you have it inside your backpack or your sleeve. And last but not least, it is their device that is issued to them, and it should not be used by anyone else. It should be their personal use, um, and that protects them and their device. So make sure you keep consistent with that. I did want to um, show you a little bit about when you get the Chromebook home and how to connect it to your home Wi-Fi. The first thing that you need to know, is, and the students will know this um, when they've got the Chromebooks in their hands, is how to log in. They log in with their Google username and password, which is their email address. For example, um, my daughter's is hrj0209 at ncmcs.net. Uh, she's a third grader. Please don't spam her. Um, but that is her email address. And so it is a .net on the end. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit trickier for the younger kids, but you'll find that uh, the teachers have done a really good job of getting them used to logging into their Chromebook. Once it is logged in and you're at home, these are the steps to get it onto your personal connection. And so what you'll see here is a, um, a panel on the bottom right. It's like a toolbar. When you click on that and it comes up, it'll have that network sign there. Um, and that's what you click on. You click on that no network symbol. 
and then you select your home Wi-Fi and then put your password into it for your home Wi-Fi. And so that's the steps to get onto it. And once they're connected to Wi-Fi, it should act exactly the same at home as it does at school. And so they should be used to that environment. I did want to show you this. This is a great support site that we are developing and is continually developing. And so this is the uh, ncmcs.org slash virtual support. And so when you're at home and, and you're not sure how to connect to a Wi-Fi, a Chromebook, um, or the tools that, that teachers are using, we try to keep this updated with some of the issues that we've discovered as we've sent these home with our two through five students. And so I'm just going to click on it real quick just to show you what the site looks like. Um, it comes up and it's basically the Chromebook here is on the left hand side. You'll see that there are translations um, in Spanish all throughout this website. There are tutorial videos. Um, I want to highlight this real quick is requesting technical support. And so if you have an issue with your Chromebook and you're having trouble, um, the first the first go to is the teacher just to see, you know, is it something that's in the Google Classroom? Is it something in Seesaw? Is it something that the teacher can help uh, do? And then from there, if we have issues, um, you can request technical assistance through this site um, where you can get that Chromebook uh, serviced and swapped out. And typically what will happen is if there is a problem with the Chromebook, um, we'll just swap with a new device. That's basically how that works is because these devices are very much, um, if you can log into one, you can log into the other. And so we'll swap the device. And so your child might not have the same exact Chromebook all throughout the year, and that's totally fine. We've got that tracked and we've got that managed in our system. And then down here are just tools. Um, the teachers are gonna tell you more about Google Classroom here in a minute, um, but these are some other tools that teachers are using throughout the county. Um, and these are just documents and tutorials to help you and your student get more familiar with those tools. Last but not least, I wanted to um, talk about this just a little bit. So if there is some troubleshooting at home. Um, so some of the questions we got, and I'll give a shout out to Beth Alderson. She came up with this slide. And so I thought it was really good to include in the Chromebook side. She put it for the iPad, but it's really good for Chromebook as well. Um, if you're having trouble connecting to your home Wi-Fi, uh, these are just some tips, you know, just to make sure that your wireless is turned on, uh, make sure the password in your home Wi-Fi is set up right. And a lot of times, I know in our Wi-Fi, we have to do a lot of reboot, so we'll unplug and replug the Wi-Fi in and then try to connect again. That fixes a lot of issues right there with home Wi-Fi. This is another thing that is very, uh, just real important real quick, is um, the connection. And so I've had to do this in my own house this evening is uh, tell my girls I've got a ninth grader or seventh grader or third grader. I've told them to stay off the Wi-Fi right now uh, because I need it um, for this meeting. And you'll find the same whether you're connected to your personal Wi-Fi or if you're on a, on a hotspot that we've given. If you have multiple people using it, um, you might have to manage that in your home as far as timing and what people are doing on the Wi-Fi while you're trying to get work done. Work done. So that's just a quick overview of the tool itself, um, the Chromebook, and what we're going to be issuing to students. And um, like I say, check out that virtual support site, and I will pass it off to our expert teachers to tell you more about the tool. Hi, everyone. As Mariah said, I'm Courtney Glendenning. Um, I am the third grade Connect virtual teacher at West End Elementary. It's been a great learning experience so far, and I'm looking forward to continuing um, this positive learning experience. So we're going to go ahead and launch into just a Google Classroom overview. Um, this is a lot of the basics with Google Classroom. At a later date, we'll kind of dive a little bit more in depth and go through some of the um, actual things that Google Classroom has to offer. But the, what we'll cover today is what can students do in Google Classroom? How does your child log into Google Classroom? And some of you, you may already, if you're, you have a Connect student, you may already be doing some of this. Um, how does your child join a teacher's Google Classroom? Can your child join a teacher's Google Meet um, through Google Classroom? And each, each teacher may do some of these things a little bit differently, so please keep that in mind. And then how does my child find their assignments through Google Classroom? So go ahead, Steve, to the next one. So what are some things that the, your child can do? Well, since they have a Chromebook, they can sign in automatically. And we'll go through um, the steps where each child does sign in. They can access, complete, and submit assignments. And we're, 
as virtual teachers, and as I'm sure um, some of the Plan B teachers, they will assign uh, assignments through Google Classroom for your child to complete and submit. They can see due dates of when an assignment needs to be completed by, and they can join a Google Meet. But again, like I said, this may depend on the teacher how they are structuring it, so just keep that in mind. Go ahead to the next one. So to sign into Google Classroom, <laughs> um, you are going to go ahead, open up a new tab, type in google.com, and then in the upper right-hand corner, there is a sign-in button. So your student will go ahead and they'll click the sign-in button. And then you can, yep. <laughs> And then their first step will be to type in their email address. So I know that Steve actually talked a little bit about this. Their email address is their username with that at ncmcs.net. Um, it's very important that they put that because otherwise they won't be able to sign in. And that's just something that the kids have to get used to doing. And then after that, they'll go ahead and type in their password. Um, just make sure you go back one, Steve. Thank you. And then just make sure that um, they are using the capital letters. If you don't or your child doesn't know their username or password, please reach out to the teacher or reach out to um, the office and they'll be able to connect you with the information to get that. All right, next one. So then to find your child's Google Classroom, we have something called the waffle up top. And you can see the arrow <laughs> pointing to the top and it's highlighted yellow. When you click on that button, it's a three by three grid, and then you'll see a bunch of different icons within the waffle. And in, within those icons, it, there is a Google Classroom button. When you click on that, that's what'll take you to Google Classroom. Now the other icons your child may be using within their class, so just, if you wanna explore that, it's great to explore that. I know in a little bit, Kayla will actually um, show you a couple of different icons that your teacher, your child's teacher may be using. Um, just one more quick thing I wanna share about Google Classroom is when you are logging in, <laughs> I've come to this issue several times. Um, some of my parents have actually logged in before. So it's connecting to the parents login and it's not letting the child log in. So just make sure if you're troubleshooting some issues that your child may be having, that it's their login that they're using. Otherwise their classroom, their assignments, things like that won't pop up. Um, you can go ahead and change the slide. And I'll pass it off to Rachel. Okay, um, Courtney, you brought up something really important um, about logging off as a parent. I think that it's really a great thing that Moore County has ensured that the privacy of our students is number one. And that is why you can't access any of their things if you're logged in as yourself. Only Moore County students have access to our Google Classroom because we want to ensure the safety and security of their work. So. When you're looking at Google Classroom and you are on your main screen, you are going to see that there might be some different classrooms available. So on this screen, you can see there's calculus, art history, biology, computer science. Those are the classes that your child would have access to. Now, every teacher sets this up a little bit differently. Some teachers use one classroom, and some teachers break it up by individual subjects. That is up to your teacher, and it might look a little bit different from each of your children. If you are noticing that your child does not have access to their Google Classroom, you're going to reach out to their teacher, and you're going to make sure that you are getting the codes. Google has specific codes. So you're gonna reach out and you're gonna ask for their Google Classroom code. And when you receive that, you are going to go to this little plus button on the top. Do you see it? It is circled in red and there's an arrow pointing to it. When you click that plus button, you're going to get a message that says join class. 
you're going to put the code in that the teacher provides and that is going to be the access that you need so that they can get to their classroom. Go ahead. Now, every classroom is meeting on Google Meet. That is our way to provide instruction, to connect with students, to have morning meetings, and to make sure that things are going well. In order, if your teacher set up their Google Classroom with um, the Google Meet link in it, your child is simply going to go into that classroom and they're going to click that Meet link. It is on the very top. Do you see it circled in green with the arrow? And that is the code that they will use to go into every single Google Meet. Other teachers may do it slightly different and they might be giving your kids the code that they need in order to uh, log into the Google Meet or if there's, there's a specific link and they'll be sending it out that way. There's, there's different ways for teachers to do it and so you're going to see it one of those two ways. Oh, and I'm going to add something. I, that is my fault. Um, can I, can, so the only thing that's really important here, guys, and this is a security thing and it's, it's there for a reason. When you click that link, your child will not have access to that Google Meet until your teacher joins. So if you're seeing that nobody is there right now, just wait for the time that the teacher has scheduled. And once the teacher is in Google Classroom, your child will have access to that Meet. Okay, now I'm good. Now, Google Classroom is so new for many of our students. And so we want to make this simple for you. When we're looking for assignments and your children log in, they're going to see three things on the top. It's going to see stream, classwork, and people. You want to ignore the stream and you want to ignore people you are always going to go to where it says classwork. That is where your teacher has the opportunity to organize their materials and their assignments. Now, if you look to the left-hand side, there is a section called topics. Your teacher is able to use the topics in Google Classroom to organize the different materials. So make sure you're going to the left-hand side and you're clicking the topic that your teacher tells you to go to. And that is going to connect you to what you need for that day. Now, under the topics, after it's clicked, you're going to see a couple of different icons. The two major icons that you're going to see um, are material. And that icon looks like a little um, bookmark. That's where your teacher is going to put anything you need, any recorded lessons, anything that is a material that they might need to be successful for the lesson. The other major icon you might see under the, under the topic in the classwork is assignments. And an assignment has a little clipboard on it. And when you see the little clipboard, that's something that you are going to need to submit to your teacher. So you will click the assignment, you complete the assignment, and when you're done, you are going to see a section on the right-hand side of Google Classroom, and there's a turn in button. Your teacher is going to be so excited to see your work come through once you hit that turn in button, your teacher is going to be able to look at it, provide you feedback, and be able to help you with what you need. Um, and so Courtney addressed a little bit earlier, in Google Classroom, you might see some different apps. Um, Google has something called Google Suite, and Within the Waffle, there are some different places your kids can go and different tools that they can use. What we're going to do is do a very, very brief overview of the ones that they will use most often, but we're hoping to have a training later on that is more thorough and goes through some of these applications 
so you really know how to implement them and help your, your child be successful. Um, so when you look at this screen, there is a little triangle that is green, yellow, and blue. That is Google Drive. When your child clicks that, they are able to see all of the work that they have created. So everything that they have done is in Google Drive. Um, Google Docs is just a, it's a, like a Word document wherever they can type their answers in and teachers might share. Um, you might see a Google Form and that is where teachers are able to put questions in and the kids answer and it provides automatic feedback for the teachers so they know how the kids are doing. Um, Gmail. Now that is important because our children now have access to, um, to email. And so on the top, you do have a Gmail account. And if you go through it, you are gonna see every single assignment created by the teacher. Um, in addition, we do have Google Slides, which is a slideshow presentation and Jamboard. And Jamboard is just a cool place that kids can start to create and show their understanding in, in a new and unique way. We hope to give you more information about that as the year continues. So the last thing is grades. As kids get into third grade and beyond, um, they do begin to receive grades. Although Google has a section for grades, that is not what the district uses to, to keep the grades. And so if you are unable to access your children's grades, we want you to make sure you're contacting your school's power school administrator. Um, each school will provide you with the necessary steps that are gonna help you set up that account. It's gonna allow you to see your children's grades on every, in every single subject. It's a wonderful thing. I'm a mama and the cool thing guys, and I'm just gonna show you real quick is on, you can download it and you put it right to your cell phone. This is my son's. And so I get alerts um, every time he gets a new grade. I know exactly how he's doing. I can look at the assignment and I can be able to support his learning at home. So this is definitely something you want. We are now going to turn it over to Kayla. Hi everyone, I'm Kayla Carter and I'm the second grade virtual teacher at Cameron Elementary. I'm going to tell you how to access Clever from your Google Chromebook. At the top of the screen on the left hand, on the left -hand side, you will click School Bookmarks. And once you click School Bookmarks, you will be able to see the tab that says Clever Portal. You will click the button that says Clever Portal and then you will log in with your Google email. You will see all of the apps that are on the portal of Clever. Clever is a personalized portal that has the apps already preloaded that your child may use throughout the school year. A few apps that your child may use are Literacy Footprints, which is a digital library that your child's teacher can use to give your child books on their reading levels. And the Big Ideas Math is also a math, it's a math curriculum that we're using this school year and it has learning tools that they can use to navigate their, their math problems. It also has learning games and learning tools that your child can use. So the big ideas and literacy footprints, if you look to the left, that is the big ideas app that you will see You'll have to log into the Clever portal and it should automatically be uploaded to your child's Clever portal. If the app is not loaded, you will need to contact your child's teacher to see what we can do to get the app loaded. On the right hand side is the Literacy Footprints. You can access that through the Clever portal and you will just click the Literacy Footprints and you will have to log in with your child's Google email and password. Once you have logged in the first time, it should save, so you shouldn't have to keep logging in. So just some feedback we've been hearing from parents, and this is for um, the Connect Kids. 
but I know that this will come soon for the Plan B kids. Um, some feedback we've been hearing is a lot about structure, actually. So on the left, well, my, <laughs> looking at it, the left-hand side of the screen, um, we just came up with a generic schedule that you may want to um, put in place for your child, or your child's teacher might actually have one to put in place for them. And it kind of helps to keep the consistency at home and just keep um, your child on track and have a routine for their daily day. If you look at the bottom of the screen, these are actually two pictures taken from two kiddos in my room. Um, their parents set up learning spaces for them. And the learning spaces have really, really helped them to stay focused and stay on track. And it, again, it just kind of provides a little bit more structure for, the, for them. Um, another tip we, we have on here is just to stay in constant communication with your child's teacher. Um, if you have a question, please let them know. Or if there is uh, a frustration your child may be having, please let them know because maybe it's something that we haven't realized or maybe um, it's something that we need to go over with the whole class to make sure everyone is understanding this. Another tip is uh, to have healthy, healthy foods or a drink, a snack, um, just for your child to munch on. That we do usually do snacks sometimes. Um, so just be able to provide them with that. And then I'm gonna let Rachel talk about the Class Dojo app on the parent side, um, because she does use this and it is a great tool for her. Um, so I know a lot of you are um, used to getting messages from your teachers on Class Dojo. You also see what's going on in the school and what's going on in the classroom. But as a parent, you have access to be able to do a couple of things on there that are going to help your child succeed. If your school's using Class Dojo, you can go in and you can um, set up a routine and schedule within Class Dojo, and it's going to set reminders for you and for them, and it's going to kind of allow you to stay on track because we all know that children thrive in structured environments that are predictable for them. And when they know they're supposed to be doing the same thing or you know the same type of thing during that time, they're going to be more willing because they're used to that type of schedule. In addition, I know that this, I'm a, so I'm a virtual teacher, but I'm also a mom to a virtual student. And so I can tell you from firsthand experience that this is new and this is challenging and we love you all so much because you are our eyes and our ears. And your children need a way to be um, positively reinforced with what you're seeing. And in Class Dojo, you have the ability to give them points that they can earn for staying on schedule or trying their best. And maybe you set up a system with them that if they earn a certain number of points through the week, then they maybe have earned a preferred activity or get a prize or something at the end of the week. Um, it's just a great reinforcer and you are able to sit and watch them and you can immediately reward them with those points. All of it is right under the parent account with Dojo. It's, it's a great tool and it's something that will motivate your children. They love Dojo points at school, so they're going to love them even more when you're sitting next to them and you hit that point and it makes the Dojo, like the sound from Dojo, and they know that they're doing an awesome job. So play around with Class Dojo. There's a lot more in there than just feedback and information from your teachers. Kayla, would you like to talk about the additional resources? It looks like she might be having some technical difficulties. So there are a lot of additional resources that are really excellent tools for you to use um, to help you go in depth with any of this information. 
located on the Moore County Schools Return to School Guide, um, located at this URL, but it's also, you're able to access it through the Moore County Schools website. So Steve, do you mind clicking on that? And we're gonna pull it up. Um, so you'll go to the Return to School tab, which is off of the Moore County Schools homepage. And you'll notice that there's a lot of different resources. If you wanna scroll down, you can see there's power school support, there's virtual learning support that Steve Johnson showed you um, earlier. There are different resources for parents. There's even mindfulness resources for children to do if your child is feeling stressed or anxious about the school year. Um, you can access that information. There is just a ton of wonderful resources right at your fingertips from the Return to School Guide on the Moore County School website. So at this point, um, we're gonna finish up. I don't see any questions in the Q&A um, chat feature. However, if you do have any, please go ahead and put them in um, as we are wrapping up here. Um, Steve is gonna talk to you a little bit about what to do if you have questions. And while he's talking to you, please feel free to add questions to that Q&A function. All right, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so um, obviously if you got questions or concerns as we roll out and we get moving uh, with devices at home, um, your child's teacher is just a click away. You can tell that we've got some amazing teachers in this district. Um, these are great representatives you've had tonight um, and they're very responsive and they're doing an excellent job um, in very uncertain circumstances. And so um, they are a great first, uh, great first lifeline for support uh, for you as you, uh, get in this journey with us together. Um, and then if the teacher is unable to help, uh, help us pick what will be offered um, and entered. And um, if you're unable to reach the school, you can also email the technical, technical support email. And there's a support hotline number as well. Um, I will say that this process is, is going well and we're being responsive, but the technology department itself is working on even better ways to streamline in the future. And so you'd wanna keep an eye out for um, times where we'll have some times in the evening like this where we can have uh, support for certain things like for example google classroom or chromebooks we'll have some more regular times of support for that if there's general questions and then we're going to be offering some drive up support at our schools as well so those are the questions and um dave we have a couple questions that i think we could answer or our, our expert panelists could answer one of the questions is when are elementary students getting their chromebooks and then a follow-up to that is when will devices go home for Plan B students? Yes, so our, um, what we're doing right now is the technology department, the IT department is doing an incredible job of getting the devices moved into our students' hands and the media specialists and the DIFs are uh, getting them cleaned up, making sure they're ready for the students and then assigning them to the kids. So that is happening this week and next week. And so as those are being issued, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give those um, devices directly to students in the classrooms so that the students themselves can work through a lot of these things the teachers have shared. And so uh, logging in, getting used to the tools and doing all that, we want to make sure they're as, as comfortable and as confident as they can be with that before they go home because the more confident the students are, the more confident you'll be as parents to help them along the way. And so we're going to wait a few weeks. And so essentially we'll be getting into October in the first two weeks of October is gonna be the window whenever schools will start um, distributing those devices home to students. We also have another one. Are we able to print from the Chromebook to our home printers? Uh, that is not a um, option for the Chromebooks for a variety of reasons. Um, so we've, we've had some issues with that in the past. So the best option is actually um, students taking their um, files and saving them to Google Drive and then potentially sharing them to a parent or sending them through their email address to a parent and then the parent printing from their device at home. Um, we're just not able to print on the student Chromebooks on home printers. And Steve, I think that's why it's such a great idea for us to make sure the kids know how to save stuff to Google Drive. I know these three ladies could probably tell us that that's, you have to teach students how to do all those wonderful things. I see Courtney nodding her head. 
Steve, we have a really another good tech, great technology questions. Can students surf the web? And if so, how are they being protected from outside Ooh. sources? Are there controls on what they can search? Great question. Yes, absolutely. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, the way that our Chromebooks work, and the reason why we go with Chromebooks and the way we set them up is because of student safety. Um, I think one of the teachers said earlier on that they've got that email address. That is a protected domain. And so what that means is on, only the educators in Moore County Schools and the students have access to our system. Um, so our filter actually on the Chromebooks is exactly the same at home as it is at school. And so it's pre-installed to the device. It's nothing that students can get around or try to find a back door out of. Um, it is exactly the same. So the same filtering that you have at school applies when you're at home as far as searching and things that they can access. Great question. We've got another great question of, can we load other educational apps to iPads and Chromebooks? Yes, so what we have on the Chromebook is, um, wish I could show a picture real quick, um, but I don't remember my, my, my daughter's uh, password off the top of my head. Uh, when you click on um, the, the bar, there's a, there's a toolbar that you click on for the apps on the Chromebook. There's something called the um, Chrome Web Store. And when you click on the Chrome Web Store, those are pre-populated apps that our teachers and our staff have approved for student use. And those can be loaded as apps onto the Chromebook. But it is not wide open for students. And so it is only the apps that is listed that is our teachers recommend. Those are the apps that they can load onto their Chromebooks. And they're not able to load anything else um, except for those. And I'm sorry, we, that also asked about iPads. And so it's very similar on the iPad. Um, we'll be getting into that more tomorrow. So if you want more information on the iPad, I believe that's tomorrow at 7 o'clock. But the quick, quick version of that is very similar. We have a preset apps that teachers have uh, vetted for use. And those are the limited number of apps that students can load onto an iPad. And it looks like we have one more question about printing um, having to do with um, not being able to print because the email is off the Moore County School domain. Uh, I'm going to read it because I've got to pull it up over here. Let me see if I can read it. Um, I can't get an exact. My oh, so, so there's a couple different ways to troubleshoot that. So if you've got your own email address, um, the, the students can um, share to that email address. Um, try to explain it a little bit better. Um, a Google email address is one that's easiest to share. Uh, they can also uh, take the documents and they can make them into um, PDF files. Um, this is one where I wish I had my screen that I could show the steps on how to do that. And so maybe um, I can get some more detailed instructions and we can put that as part of the video. Um, and maybe that's something that I can also put on that virtual support site as well. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And then the last one is a curriculum type question. Uh, will Plan B students learn through live lessons or pre-recorded lessons or a mix of both? Or is that up to the individual teacher? And when will we find that out? Um, at this point, that is up to the individual teacher, um, as well as the culture of the school and what the instructional leaders at the school have determined are most appropriate. So we're seeing a mix across the district of teachers who um, do provide pre-recorded lessons, as well as might provide live lessons through something like Google Meet. Um, so definitely reach out to your child's teacher to find out more about that, and that is a wonderful question. Um, I would reach out to the team to find that out. So it looks like those are all the questions. I just want to thank our panelists so very much. Y'all are awesome. I know um, I learned some tips along the way to help with remote learning in my own household. Um, we are so lucky to have you guys here. And I would also like to thank all of the district level support 
as well as all of the parents and families who decided to log in tonight and are taking such an active role in your child's education. That is so huge to your child's success. And we really appreciate your partnership in all of this and becoming your child's teacher at home alongside with their teachers at school. Um, we have one final question and then Donna Gephardt, our Director of Curriculum, will close it up for the night. Um, the last question is, does access to Google Classroom and other sources that we spoke about today shut down every day at the end of the um, school day? And it looks like that was already answered. Um, so they are available through the evenings and the weekends. Thank you, Steve, for answering that. So Donna, I'm gonna turn it over to you to close us off. I first wanna thank our three wonderful, phenomenal teachers, as Mariah said, as she started off for us tonight. They've had a long day and you see they still have smiles on their faces and I know they're probably gonna go check their Google Classrooms, um, just knowing them. So we appreciate you guys so much. We appreciate all you parents. I know this is an unprecedented school year. Um, we're making history in what we're doing. And I, I, for one, am so pleased that we have opportunities for parents to have digital, total connect virtual learning, as well as face-to-face -face and remote learning. We are very fortunate in Moore County to have wonderful folks like Mariah, who this was her inspiration. Uh, Steve jumped in and said, we can make this happen. We are always here to answer questions and to provide support. As Mariah mentioned, please go to your child's teacher. We really wanna set our children up for success and your children up for success. We wanna make sure that they have the tools they need in order so they're not frustrated and socially and emotionally are in a good place when these uh, Chromebooks and um, go home with them. But we greatly appreciate you parents and thank you for all that you do and thank you for trusting us and uh, being with us. And again, to our three teachers, give, we wanna give you a huge pat on the back. You guys are awesome. Thank you all so much. Everyone have a great evening.